I was born in Lethbridge, Alberta, and um, that is where I am right now, on a farm. Yes, I was a competition dancer in Lethbridge, and I did my first solo to Zippity Doo Da. <laughs> I was in a bright yellow costume with these huge buttons on top, and I was seven years old, maybe. Um, and then I moved to Calgary to join Airborne when I was 15, and I was on their competitive team. Uh, I moved to Vancouver when I was 17. I'm not saying move away young, it was just I really had no choice coming from a small town. But I auditioned for the Source Dance Company and I got in. Uh, thank you, Joanne and Alex Basusic. Still love you guys. <laughs> um, and then my first professional job was for Elisa Strada. She's a Canadian artist, and we did a few shows, music videos, and then I did the Juno Awards for her, which I remember going into the bathroom stall and calling my mom and crying because I, at that moment I felt like I could actually be a professional dancer. get asked that question a lot and I still don't know how to put it into words which I guess is um, shows how important and how my dreams came true within a second but what I remember was the feeling watching my mom my grandma and my best friend Keiko in the audience and they were all crying even before the announcement and I almost started tearing up because I think I was in so much shock, I had no idea what was happening. And when they announced fourth place and third place, and then the top two, we both won a car. So I just remember thinking, this is so badass, I just want a car. And they actually bring you the keys and everything, so it feels really special in the moment. Um, and then I remember confetti dropping, and it was almost like I was underwater and everything was in slow motion. And the host said Tara Jean um, and it was just surreal and I don't think I can ever put it into words but what I remember the most which I don't know how I got a phone whose phone it was um, but my brother I had him on the phone while I was on stage confetti still dropping I'm in my gold little sparkly outfit and um, I hear his voice and I hear people screaming and crying in the background and he just said to me he said you did it and I just cried and that was probably one of the best moments of my life for sure <laughs> that's a very hard question uh, I definitely have to say my mental illness piece that was choreographed by Stacy Tukey performed with Vincent Desjardins um, it was mentally so exhausting and I remember doing so much research in that whole week I'm, I mean, I'm not a method actress, so I don't know how to shut emotions off. So I was in such a weird headspace. I hardly remember that week, just crying, waking up crying, uh, feeling anxiety, feeling depression, feeling sad. And then learning Canadian statistics of that one in every five people suffer from a mental illness. And having the artist Katie Thompson reach out to me and explain to me what the song is about and the lyrics and with her husband, and um, yeah, I feel very honored and lucky that I was chosen to, to perform that piece. I knew at age 14, I was doing a workshop with Sarah Dolan in Calgary, and we danced to Delicate from Damien Rice. And it's, yeah, the first time I really knew that I was gonna try and become a professional dancer. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, my advice to Canadian dancers is we are so lucky to have a Canadian passport. There's countries that it's much easier for us to get in or if you want to go to the States. Um, if you start doing your work now, paperwork, getting newspaper clippings, any possible uh, things that you have, trophies, whatever you have to prove that you could be top 5% of your country to get an O-1 visa, start that now. But I think my biggest advice is also um, focus on what you want because we're also 
in an industry where, as Canadian dancers, we're told LA, New York, um, but the world is, there's so many beautiful places you can go dance and have a, an amazing career. Um, London, for example, you can go. Um, I lived in India for a year doing shows there. So I think do your research and where you could see yourself and just remember that nothing is permanent. If you go to a country for a couple weeks, you don't like it, then go back home, have a new step, a new game plan, uh, but you just have to have your guts. Definitely the creative process and watching everything come to life. Choreography is little bits of my life and uh, parts of my heart. So watching someone else doing my movement and making my life come to life. <laughs> it's just, um, yeah, it's an incredible thing. I say the same person every single time. Alex Wong! Uh, he's my best friend and we lived together for many years but when we collaborate together we've done shows in China and um, worked together in lots of different countries it's just so fun and the creative process him and I we're, we work really hard but we're also very silly together um, so yeah he's my favorite person ever to collaborate with I've never set goals to dance for any specific artist uh, but I will say my favorite I've ever worked for um, because I'm not impressed by fame or celebrities, anything like that. I'm impressed by really good human beings and working for Shania Twain, kind person, she's a legend and um, yeah, very humble heart. Such an amazing question. I truly am grateful for all the opportunities that I've had in my life. Um, I'm really proud of my career and everything kind of came in place and one TV show took me to another country to do another TV show to do et cetera, et cetera. So I'm really grateful for them all. Um, but to kind of twist the question, I guess the, the first um, moment that I felt extremely grateful and it kind of changed my perspective on life was I was doing a TV show in Burkina Faso in Africa and I was doing a solo to Hallelujah and after that performance um, I went back to my five-star place with my own private pool and and I thought to myself like I am in a country where I've spent amazing time with all these beautiful children in the orphanage and playing drums and I'm happy crying and we're barefoot playing soccer with a muddy ball. And I was laying at this five-star place, hotel, and, and it just made me realize that I don't need this to be happy and that I've worked so hard to be a good person um, and that the luxury things and stuff that really doesn't mean anything is nice but that it's like inevitably, that's not what makes me happy. Um, so that was such a, a beautiful part of my career because everything was a bonus um, and it really doesn't take me much to be happy. Dermot Kennedy, I love him. Um, his music hits every single heartstring in every song I've ever listened to. And he started as a busker in Dublin, so his career is, has just gone wild, so super proud of him. Top five on my playlist right now would be 18 from Robert Francis, You Should Call Home by Bastion Baker, uh, Overdose from Marine, uh, Ever After, which is my punk side from Mariana's Trench, and <laughs> Uh, days go by from Keith Urban. Woo! Uh, this question is always so hard. I don't know. I have done 61 countries and I do not have a favorite. And that's real. Sorry, that's the worst answer ever. I 100% do not stay positive and motivated all the time. The best way I can explain it is Dance is like a relationship with your partner. Some days are gonna be hard, some days you're gonna have to put in so much work, 
Some days you're gonna wanna throw your hands up and say that you're done and you don't wanna do it anymore and that is completely normal. Um, yeah, you can't put so much pressure on something or someone to make you happy. You have to do that on your own. So if you get cut from an audition, making it into a positive that it wasn't meant for you, that something better is coming. Um, I've said that to myself thousands of times while I'm crying and always calling my mom saying, I can't believe I didn't get it or whatever. Um, yeah, you just have to remember why you started in the first place. And it all comes down to the simple matter whether it's dance or with someone, it's just, it comes down to love. That's it. Anything outdoors, any sports, playing anything, even if I'm awful. I love surfing, even though I'm awful. Um, I love to cook a lot. Uh, being raised around Ukrainian cuisine, I, my mom taught me cabbage rolls and, and borscht and vleshnika and all these amazing things that I'm so happy that she taught me how to cook. Oopsies, another awful answer for you. I don't have a Starbucks order. Um, I try to almost never go to Starbucks because <laughs> it's such a big franchise and it's all over the world and you'll be at a Starbucks looking at a Starbucks which is convenient if you support Starbucks, but I love to go to the little local companies and support like the small non-franchise, cute little coffee shops. People know that I'm superstitious and I knock on wood three times, but not a lot of people know that if there's no wood around that I do this, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, tap. That is real life. <laughs> traveling to Switzerland which will be my 62nd country yeah 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 um, and I'll be doing some zoom stuff from there as well and also I'm trying to think sorry quarantine has got my brain like um, my brother Dustin and I have some exciting news about human first dancer second our convention so I'm excited to share that and then next year 2021 is really the next possible TV contract so I'll keep you guys posted probably not the traditional traditions but playing pond hockey <laughs> we always play and it's so fun except I do regret saying full contact because I always get smashed and I'm scared I'm gonna lose all my teeth but I guess that's the true Canadian smile <laughs> I've been lucky enough to be able to tour my own country and another awful answer I can't choose. Everywhere is so different. Alberta beef, no question. <laughs> I do get a lot of my hats from Simon's in Quebec. Scream a curse, no.